What I love about traveling alone is how it allows me to simultaneously slip completely into my own world while also experiencing someone else's. In that way, the experience of traveling is a lot like the experience of reading. My name is Stephanie, and this is the first video in my Reading Around the World challenge, where I'm reading a book from every country, and I'm going to try my best to prioritize countries that are outside of the Euro-American sphere. In this video, I'm going to be reading a book written by an Indonesian author while I travel around Jogjakarta. Thanks for joining me. I was initially planning to do this trip on my own, but my husband's business trip was cancelled, so he ended up joining me last minute, and that ended up actually being really special for us. That's because my husband's family actually originally comes from Indonesia, and his father's side specifically is coming from Java. And so it ended up becoming a lot more of a personal experience reading this book and exploring some of this culture because we were doing it together and got to learn a lot more about each other. When I first showed him this book, Man Tiger, and read him the back, he said that this sounds super Indonesian because Indonesians are always turning into animals. So I was quite pleased with myself in my selection. <laughs> but this book is essentially about a boy who we know from the very beginning, he commits a murder and he has the spirit of a female white tigress in his body. This is also a good point for me to mention that this video, this entire video is going to be spoiler free. I am going to, however, be talking about different aspects of the book, like the tiger and how that relates to Javanese traditional culture, but I won't give away any major plot points. By the time that we arrived, we were absolutely starving. So we went to get some food before hitting some of the sites before they closed off for the day and just began to kind of wander the city. The next morning, we had a full tumble day, so we were picked up at 4 a.m. to see the sun rise, followed by Borobudur, we went to the Merapi volcano, and Prambanan temple.
So I wanted to check in after we got back from the temples last night, but when we got back, I was just wiped. I realized I have a very, very low energy level and I just completely crashed like immediately. So I meant to check in this morning, but we ended up going to an Air Force Museum with my husband. And the last time I went to one of those with him, I ended up in the hospital with heat stroke. So we decided to go super, super early and I didn't end up checking in until now. Um, so first impressions, I am 70% through the book. So far I've been really liking it. I think actually going to the Air Force Museum was quite interesting and helpful for me in understanding some of the context of the book because the book, when it begins, it, it starts by describing a lot of characters and a lot of um, environments where there's the impact of the Cold War and World War II is still felt. They talk about finding a lot of the artifacts and even scraps of planes in the jungle and using that in their lives. Um, and a lot of the characters are like war veterans who are trying to kind of find meaning in their life now. For me, it was just very interesting to kind of get a sense of what the war was like in, in this area and to see some of the machinery and the equipment that were being referenced in the book. So I guess that actually narrowed the personal and temporal sort of sense of distance between me and the characters. The book starts off with a murder. We know who died and who did it on the very first page, the first sentence actually. So it's a bit more of a why done it and it, it begins like quite broad. We are looking in the minds and hearing the voices of all of the characters in the village first finding out who got murdered and how this person was like brutally killed. And we kind of get a sense of their impressions of the characters that were involved. And so the book kind of, I mean, it's a very skinny book, but it starts off very broad. And then as it progresses, it begins to narrow onto the two families that are kind of at the core of the conflict. And we hear a little bit more about their personal journeys, their lives, their histories, and it's told in a non-linear fashion. So far, at least, um, I've seen it on some lists for fantasy. I don't know if I'd really say that it's a fantasy book. I can definitely appreciate the aspects of magical realism, but at the same time, I would say it's much more of a family drama. And a lot of the sort of magic that comes into play is very based on myths and legends and traditional beliefs and superstitions. So, I mean, it's really a book about real people so far and less about magic or speculative elements, but I am really enjoying it. But I would say that some of the magic of the book is also how the author describes things. His prose is just beautiful and it creates a very salient image in your mind. Um, also the descriptions of the food are so enjoyable in this book. I, I think that I also get a little bit extra out of it because he, he uses a lot of local language and local terminology from, uh, from Bahasa and I'm familiar with a lot of it, especially as it pertains to like food or referring to people and, and, and ceremony. Um, but I don't think that you need to know or understand any of that language to be able to really enjoy and get a lot from the book. But if you do, um, I think it definitely adds sort of a layer to being able to picture the world that the author is painting for you. I'm finding the part, uh, parts with the sort of magical tiger quite interesting as well. It's just kind of getting to that part where I'm getting a little bit more information. I have a feeling that you're not really going to see a whole lot of the, the magic um, until you're kind of towards the end of the book um, when you're finding out why this boy killed this man. But it, there is a really beautiful scene where um, basically the main character inherits the tiger from his grandfather who passes away and, and the spirit of the tiger who protects his family and the grandfather then goes on to the grandson. And so there's just this really lovely moment where the tiger comes to him and, and becomes a part of him. Uh, this is not a spoiler, it says it on the back cover, but I thought that that was a really heartwarming, very touching scene than those little instances where we do get like a flash of otherworldness. Um, about this character it was really intriguing as well. So I'm quite excited to keep going. I'm excited to keep reading 
and um, I don't know if I'm gonna have time to do another check-in because my holiday is almost over but if I do I will and um, if not I'll come to you with my final thoughts No, like there was like. Oh, actually, there's like a whole. It's a spider whip. No, but there was like actually spiders there too. And I almost touched it. But no, like above, there's some kind of thing. under my nose. Yeah. Okay. Should I use a spoon to look at the... <laughs> I'm gonna get the, <laughs> the charcoal also. It tastes so chocolatey actually. Really? Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's really the day not... before, our driver suggested a place to eat Mengat Lele which is slightly off the beaten path, but we didn't realize that you basically go into somebody's kitchen and help yourself home style. So that was a little bit uh, <laughs> awkward when we first were trying to figure out what we were doing, but the food was delicious. It was so good. And it was the end of the day, so the owners were just hanging around and chatting with us but mostly my husband because my bahasa is slow and a bit patchy. But the owners were very kind and invited us to meet his mother in his home. And she was the one who all started it. And when we met her, she was 93 and we couldn't really communicate with her too easily because she only spoke Javanese. But it was a really neat experience. Those last few pages was so intense. I feel like I was holding my breath until I hit that last paragraph where you finally understand what happened, why he killed the other man. And I was just reading it as quickly as I could. I felt like I could have predicted the ending, but I didn't. I really, it, it, it shocked me a little bit and it was just devastating, but also emotionally satisfying in a strange way. I think a lot of 
the subject material of this book is kind of heavy or sad or difficult. So do check the trigger warnings if they have any sort of sensitive topics. I guess I would kind of summarize this book as being a critique of society and that is explored by exploring a wound that is in a family. So in my opinion, this book really is demonstrating how a really conservative, patriarchal society structure can often makes a safe haven for abusers or fails to protect people who are vulnerable. I thought that the way that the author handles this is just really well done because he is both able to critique the parts of a society uh, that are problematic and are harming people while also celebrating and separating that from things that are cultural and valuable and beautiful and important. No, and making it a way about the how we choose to live our lives, and the way that we give power and the way that we use power. In terms of magic, there's sort of a blend of traditional Japanese folklore and practice that is blended in with the sort of everyday real lives and struggles of people. And it's, it's done very subtly and I feel like there's a lot of magic also in how he described uh, things like the natural world expressing the emotions and the, even the acceleration of the plot and acting in almost these like conscious way, the flowers blooming and overtaking a house and wilting, like the, there's so much there that just creates such an atmosphere and such a powerful imagery and communicates theme in such an amazing way. Uh, so as I said before, my husband mentioned that sort of this transformation into a tiger um, or, or drawing on animal spirits is like a very traditional Japanese kind of thing. And I got to learn a little bit more about some of the beliefs in black magic and these tiger and animal spirits that are protectors while we were on the trip. Partly from our driver who does all of the temples, Atok, he shared a lot about uh, how a lot of people still believe in these things. And uh, he says, you know, if you believe in it, it has a lot of power. But if you don't believe in it, it doesn't have any power. And how his grandfather used to live in a time where black magic was really widely practiced and they had to have a bomo, who is sort of like a shaman or like magic user, um, come and remove that sort of bad energy, the evil, out from his body because of course they don't really practice that anymore because a lot of the population are either Christian or Muslim using like that. Often he explained that this would be sort of um, activated or brought down through using silat, which is a more of a martial art and performance art now that people aren't using it uh, in this sort of spiritual protective way anymore. But you would take the form or the pose of the animal and it would kind of invoke the spirit to uh, aid you and protect you in whatever kind of conflict you were about to engage in. But yeah, I, th I thought that was extremely interesting. Um, and Ika goes a little farther with this. In, in the, the traditional way that this is practiced, the tiger doesn't come inside of your body like it does in the book. The tiger is an external spirit. And from my understanding, at least, it tends to be male, where the tiger in this is female. And so he's doing kind of some interesting things with gender in this book as well. And um, another kind of fun moment that I had while I was reading this book is my sister-in-law is pregnant. And in the book, there is also a woman who is pregnant. And they have this kind of anecdote that I read in the book that I've been hearing for the last eight months. If the baby is a girl, the mother will look very beautiful. She'll, she'll also want to put like more effort into her appearance and have that sort of glow, right? And so my sister-in-law is having a girl, so of course she looks absolutely lovely. But I thought that was kind of um, interesting to see uh, that this is really a cultural thing and where this comes from. And I don't know, it, it made the book feel a little bit more personal for me reading some of these anecdotes that I have been now surrounded by for several years um, and that is really unique to sort of Javanese Malay cultures. Uh, this ended up just being a much more personal experience for me, I guess, reading this book and learning about Javanese culture, but also learning a lot more about my extended family through my husband's sides culture and where some of the things that 
I have started to hear about and that have been integrated into my life, where that comes from. Yeah, that was a really neat and kind of unexpected aspect and it made me really glad that I was able to start this challenge by reading a book that, uh, you know, is outside of the Euro-American sphere but still kind of hits kind of closer to home as well. You know, separate from my own personal experiences and feelings and thoughts as it relates to my family reading this, I just thought it was a wonderfully written book because the author really blends a lot of genre here as well. There's parts that are quite literary where it's following the family and their dramas and then there's aspects that are very suspenseful and almost thriller-esque, the way it's jumping back and forth in time. You're trying to piece what is going on together and even the main character who at least I thought was the main character in the beginning isn't really the main character and who the story is truly about and you begin to see that as the, the plot narrows down. So I think this is probably going to be almost undoubtedly one of my favorite books of the year. It was, it was so good, it was so beautiful and I'm so excited that the first book that I read was such a strong start for so many different reasons. Um, and I really encourage just everybody to go read this book because it did a lot and it made me feel a lot that I haven't felt or <laughs> seen done in a book for a really long time. And I don't think that you need all of these personal connections to get so much out of it and enjoy it so much either. But yeah, if you made it to this part in the video, thanks for coming along with me on my little journey through literature and Jogjakarta, and I hope you enjoyed it. Tell me if you've read any Indonesian lit, tell me if you've read Man Tiger, or if you have any suggestions for me for upcoming videos. So until next time guys, take care, see you soon.